Oh, hi. I didn't see you there. I'm Philbert D, and I'm outdoors today. Uh, also, I'm in, I'm in Macau. It's, it's Macau. This is Phil on Films. So yeah, I'm here in Macau at the Macau Cultural Center. This is the fourth edition of the International Film Festival and Awards Macau. Uh, they have a pretty strong selection of films, actually. Uh, it's really shaping up to be one of the bigger festivals in all of Asia. So this week, I'm just gonna do a bunch of capsule reviews of everything that I see. Some of it might even show up in the Philippines after the whole film fest, whatever it happens. So let's go! So the first film I saw is Jojo Rabbit, which is the story of a 10-year-old Hitler youth in Nazi Germany who idolizes uh, Adolf Hitler. And then has his world rock when he kind of discovers that his mom has secretly been letting a Jewish girl hide in their house. I came out of this movie kind of really excited about it. Although the farther away I got from it, I started to think more about some of its uh, more troubling aspects. Not that this film is like in any way pro-Nazi or anything, but it's asking for a level of empathy that I'm not sure most people are ready for now. The thing about the film is that in order to show how ridiculous a lot of the hate in this movie is, the, a lot of the hate that the Nazis let out about the Jews, it has to voice that hate anyway. And it's clear that the film is condemning it, making fun of it, making it feel ridiculous. People used to say a lot of nasty things about me. Oh, this guy's a lunatic. Oh, look at that psycho. He's going to get us all killed. But there's still kind of a strange lack of uh, artfulness in the way that it delivers this message. Uh, it's just, it just kind of lets it out there and like, points at it and says, Isn't this ridiculous? Isn't this ridiculous? It's time to burn some books! Yeah! And while that's a fair approach, I'm not sure it's entirely the best way to go about it. Having said that, I feel real something for what it ends up saying. It isn't so much about the ability of humans to be redeemed or their inherent goodness. It's more about how toxic tribalism is as a whole, how it turns us all into victims. That's something that's worth keeping in mind, especially once this current era of awfulness is over and we still have to deal with the people who said and did awful things during this time having been caught up in some terrible business. Yeah, it's gonna be tough, but empathy is key. I think I'm gonna give this four stars. You know, it was kind of strange uh, seeing Terrence Malick's A Hidden Life so soon after Jojo Rabbit. It is also a film set in Nazi Germany, but it's all but it's instead of a Hitler youth, the main character is a conscientious objector. Somebody who actually served in the war, then when called upon to fight again, said he didn't want to uh, he didn't want to salute Hitler. He didn't want to pledge his loyalty to Hitler, feeling that it couldn't be the truth. This is a very long film. It's a Terence Malick film. It's nearly three hours long and it's shot in that Terence Malick way which involves a lot of shots of people running around in fields of wildflowers and wheat, their hands brushing against the plant life, the camera chasing them and then just cutting. Like, I think I've figured out what Terrence Malick has been doing for the last couple of years. He's really been obsessed with capturing life on screen. He's not so much trying to tell these big, huge stories anymore. He's really enamored with life itself. So his camera itself is lively. It chases down the characters. It follows them through corridors and fields and rooms and things. And he captures these little details that are so evocative of what life really is. It isn't a collection of big moments. It's a collection of really small moments. And this film is kind of also about the same thing that Jojo Rabbit is about. It isn't really a story of redemption. In fact, there is no redemption to be found in this film, uh, even less than in Jojo Rabbit. Uh, but there is this idea that we need to have empathy for people who get caught up in the bad behavior, in the terrible things that happen in history. Uh, and uh, it does so in a way that will probably turn a lot of, lot of people off too, in the, in, in the same way that Jojo Rabbit, well, not in the same way, in a completely different way than what, how Jojo Rabbit does it. It's really a magic film. It's lengthy and it's slow and it often loops back in circles and people keep saying the same thing but that's kind of what this is it's a uh, it's i found it really moving by the end although i've, I've heard some other critics say here that it's the last hour that actually uh, turned him off but yeah it's this it's just this little thing where 
people keep telling the main character that nothing that he does will matter. That this whole protest isn't helping anyone. It's in fact going to hurt his family. But he does it anyway. And that's kind of wonderful. I'm giving this four stars as well. Moving on, I also saw Dance With Me, which is a Japanese film. It's kind of Japanese film that I expect to show up in Egosai one of these days. It's kind of a crowd pleaser that's also kind of, it's Warner Brothers Japan, so it's a big mainstream thing. It's the kind of thing that might end up becoming the opening film of a big festival like that. And it's a, it's a fun film that, if it, that doesn't really make any sense. The story of a woman who gets hypnotized so that whenever she hears music, she becomes the star of a musical in her head and she starts uncontrollably singing and dancing. She can't help herself. This is, of course, a big nuisance, especially since uh, she has a career in business that's, uh, that's pretty critical. And so she goes on this big road trip to find the hypnotist, the hypnotizer, so that she can cure her. It's a pretty charming film that's really led by its performances. It's a kind of like a mess of a narrative that takes a character all to all sorts of places. It's hard to latch on to some of the silliness uh, right there. But it's a big, fluffy, enjoyable thing. The musical sequences are pretty good, especially the ones that, uh, where we get to see the fantasy in her head instead of just what's happening in real life. The connection between the fantasy world in her head and what's actually happening in real life is actually one of the most tenuous parts of this film. Also, I would have pitched in the room. I would have said, hey, what, what if she gets earplugs and she doesn't have to hear the music? Wouldn't that solve a lot of this stuff? But yeah, that's not what the film's concerned about. It's just like, really just wants to be this fun musical thing. And I can't hold that against it. Uh, I'm giving it three stars. I'm wearing a different shirt. Uh, it's a different day. So uh, yeah, I've seen a lot of films and I don't want this video to go on for like nine hours. So let me do some even quicker hits on some films. First, Proxima. Eva Green is an astronaut in training. She's going to fly to Mars. Uh, I really like this film. It's like a interesting counterpoint to Ad Astra, taken from a female perspective and less, you know, less kind of like, ooh, astronauts have to be cold and mostly about how like uh, a mother loves her child. It's pretty good. I like it. Four and a half stars. I saw Judy, starring Renee Zellweger as Judy Garland. It's a film about her final years in uh, London doing a series of concerts and she's still a mess. And uh, it's fine, I guess. It's a very biopic -y biopic. Renee Zellweger is probably going to have some awards thrown at her, which is interesting. It's not just like, oh, uh, we want to acknowledge like the greatness of your performance, but also it's also like, here, here, just take the awards. Right? We get it, we get it. You really wanted it. It's okay, I guess. Uh, two and a half stars? Uh, one of the big hits of the festival season is this film called Buoyancy. It's uh, by an Australian director. It's about a Cambodian boy who uh, goes to Thailand hoping to get work and instead ends up being a slave on a trawling vessel. Uh, I can see the value in it. I can see uh, the filmmaking is very strong, but it does feel like the kind of misery porn that white people make when they're tackling the issues of uh, non-white people. Uh, I, I, I want to give the film as much credit as I can, but like, there's a thinness to the way it plays with the villains, the ostensible villains of this piece that like, really uh, makes it feel just like, you know, one of those like, oh, look how terrible this is kind of things, instead of like really digging deep into the problem and figuring out what's actually going on. Uh, it's good though, uh, three, three and a half stars. Anthony Chen's follow-up to Ilo Ilo is his second film, uh, Wet Season, which is about a teacher and a student who kind of uh, get become close to each other. And it slowly becomes something more than just like a, a teacher-student relationship kind of thing. It's a very precise movie. I think Anthony Chen is a great director. But there is a thinness to the story. Like uh, that precision kind of goes away in the third act as the characters start acting in kind of unreasonable ways and uh, it just doesn't feel like it pays off in the way that I wanted it to at least. I think Chen is very skillful but I'd really like to see something more substantial in this plot. I think people are gonna mostly like it. Three and a half stars. I only got to see three of the main competition films. First is Bell Bird, a film from New Zealand which is uh, which I found really charming although it is a very small film. It isn't like the most, uh, it isn't the most profound film. It's really, it's, a, it's about a 
farmer in New Zealand, in rural New Zealand, whose wife just died. That he wants to be able to pass on his farm, but he's also the kind of taciturn man's man that can't really like talk to his son or anything. Yeah, I think it's a it's a nice movie. I think uh, it really does capture a certain kind of rural lifestyle uh, that feels like very real. I think it's good. Uh, four stars. I saw this film called Bombay Rose, which is an animated film from India. It's kind of this weird love story between a guy from Kashmir and this girl who was orphaned and she sells jasmine uh, bouquets and uh, it's, a, it's a lot of things. I think the animation is great, I think the soundtrack is great. I don't think the story pans out in a way that I really wanted it to. It's not bad exactly, but like if you're looking for something to really connect to, it. It, it's asking you to go look for it. Uh, three stars. I saw this Argentinian film. It's called uh, Family Members. It's about this brother and sister who return home after some wild, vague, like horrible tragedies happen and stuff. And uh, they're sne they basically squat in their own mother's home. There were, there's some interesting choices made here. There's like this scene that was played out as machinima. It's really kind of cool. But it feels scattered and a, a little scattered and uh, a little all over the place. I think I just needed it to be a little more focused or, or like more sure of what it wanted to say. One of those small festival films that some people will end up loving, I think. Uh, three and a half stars. The closing film of the festival is um, what's a film called I'm Living It, which is a film from Hong Kong which stars Aaron Kwok. Aaron Kwok plays this like big finance guy who who what who became disgraced, was arrested for embezzling, now living inside one of those 24-hour McDonald's with a, like a community of people and they're all helping each other out. And it's a big melodrama that gets kind of ridiculous. Like there's some there's some good performances, but like the the way it piles on the misery just becomes like uh, tiring after a while. I recognize that this film is trying to address like a serious problem in Hong Kong, uh, but it, I feel like it does it. It goes kind of too far in like building up the drama. It starts to make it not feel real. Yeah, I didn't like it. Two stars. Uh, I'm pretty much done here in Macau. Uh, I'm in the process of packing my bag, in a few hours I'll be at the airport waiting to fly home. So that I can go see movies back home again. I'm sorry I missed Kai Began. I'm sure it was a hoot. Thanks to the International Film Festival and Awards Macau for inviting me here yet again. I don't know why you keep inviting me, but I made a video for you guys. <laughs> I, I do suggest that if you want to see like some of the most talked about films in the year, they do seem to end up in Macau every year. And uh, if you are lucky enough to have the resources to fly out to another country to go to attend a film festival, uh, this is a relatively near one to the Philippines. And uh, it's it's a lot of fun. Till then, you know, like and subscribe, leave a comment, ask a question. And uh, until next time, goodbye, internet. Um, goodbye, Macau.